Chart update, three-day tracker, data to 29 March 2020. Latest data point. For our overall perspective of the coronavirus situation, please see either the original Fact Not Fear presentation or the short version, both available on YouTube Peerless Reads. If you haven't watched either of those, these charts may require some ex explanation. That is not the purpose of this update. Please take a moment to view at least the short version. We have increased coverage to 25 countries plus China and Hubei province, to include Sweden, Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, Japan and Indonesia. Our Australian and New Zealand friends asked for data to be added and we obliged. If there's a world beer shortage, we'll know who to blame. We now have, as previous viewers will know, two clear worst case scenarios, being Hubei and Italy, which has passed Hubei but has a well-developed curve so that we can project a realistic final outcome. This shows that Trump and UK advisor Imperial College COVID-19 response team exaggerated the death risk to the UK by 50 times and to the US an astonishing 400 times. The difference reflects the significantly lower death risk currently being reported by the USA. Italy continues to be the leading non-China country, passing Hubeian cases per 100 million population. Like Italy, Norway, Sweden and Germany show pronounced curl over, indicating mature exposure at or near peak. This is group 2, we include Italy for reference as well, as China and Hubei. France, Spain and Switzerland all show marked curl over, reducing case growth. Russia continues to progress without marked curl over, while Turkey, sorry Turkey, has an extremely high rate of growth. Russia continues to progress without marked curl over, while Turkey has an extremely high rate of growth. America, Canada and Israel show little sign of curl over. It seems that fighting the virus has created delay, not prevention. Brazil shows perhaps a hint of curl over and Mexico a rather more pronounced slowdown. Iran and Iraq show pronounced curl over, but then continued in a log linear fashion constant geometric growth on these axes. South Africa and Algeria continue to progress without marked curl over. Since Hubei is completed and Italy has a well-developed curvature and is at or close to peak, along with Norway and Germany in particular, barring relapse, we can use them to estimate final severity for other nations. The results will not be precise to two decimal places, but it's fair to say that they are better than official estimates exaggerating, rea exaggerating reality 50 and 100 times. The results will not be precise to two decimal places, but it's fair to say they are better than official estimates exaggerating reality 50 and 400 times. We have two projections, one using a manual choice of reducing growth factor and one using the factor derived from the chart. It's not the R0 model, massively discredited in our view, by its use to generate either extremely wrong or extremely manipulated scenarios. We apply the reducing factor to the previous day's rate of growth to produce a plausible curve as seen in the images. It may not be right, it may not be official, but it looks entirely plausible. And right now, plausible is at a premium. This is our manual choice of factor and it produces a final exposure of 261,000 cases per 100 million population, a little over two times Hubei's 114,000 cases. This is our curve derived factor as described in our definitive projection video which generates a final outcome for Italy of 332,000 cases per 100 million population. Notice that 261,000 and 332,000 are different by a factor of 1.5 or 50%. That seems an entirely reasonable range of uncertainty and is of a very different order of magnitude to 50 times, 131 times or 400 times, as in the official worst case estimates. Bear in mind that these do not rely on lockdown, we have heard that the UK government is revising its estimate down, but having scared us into their home, it doesn't really matter. Mission accomplished. If the revision is due to lockdown, then we would remind you that our estimates show, as we've consistently shown, such low figures that no lockdown could possibly be justified. If the revision is not due to lockdown and they just got the figures wrong, then the lockdown should be lifted immediately and the body responsible, Imperial College, censured and prosecuted for incitement of terror. 
We don't need another dodgy dossier and WMD false claims that triggered the Iraq war. Then we watched our soldiers go off to die. This time we've all been confined to our homes in the biggest open prison on earth for our safety. That sounds all too familiar. However, the best antidote to falsehood is facts, widely disseminated. So here's our worst case scenarios informed by the real world, not some conveniently outrageous think tank estimates. We show three scenarios, Hubei, Italy current and Italy projected, using the 261,000 cases per 100 million pop. We apply Italy and Hubei's case rates to other nations and then apply their local death rates as published in World Health Organization daily reports. For example, the UK, 66 million population, actual cases 29th, 17093, deaths 1019, death rate 6%. We'll apply that death rate, which is quite high, in a minute. Drop to the Hubei rows, using Hubei levels we would have 75615 cases and at 6% 4508 deaths. At Italy's current cases we have 101719 cases and 6064 deaths. At Italy's projected cases we'd have 172260 cases and 10269 deaths. In the real world's two worst cases we can reasonably expect to have between 4,508 Hubei level and 10,269 Italy projected level deaths. We went into lockdown for 500,000 deaths. Would we do so for 10,000 deaths? We show the official exaggeration for the UK underneath the table. The middle percentages, actual CPCM versus Hubei and versus Italy, is an indicator of the severity of the situation and also degree of maturity of the contagion. At 154k per 100 million, Italy is 34.5% worse, a 134.5% factor, than Hubei, and is today officially the world's worst hit region, not as widely reported the USA. Germany is at 55% of Hubei, 41% of Italy, so lagging and or going to escape Italy's severity. That's where the curves help us decide if it's lagging, same height but later, or escaping curls over at a lower level of severity. Here's group two. You can always pause the video to take a snapshot or download the PDF from the link posted on the video's YouTube page. Here's the US and Canada. They're at 20% and 8.5% of Italy, barely begun or massively escaping, but the chart says not. However, notice the deaths or almost complete lack of them for the US. The widely reported Trump advisor, Imperial College, no US, UK, Iraq war memories there, of course, cites 2.2 million dead in an unmitigated, i.e. free society. Italy and Hubei say 6 to 13,000. People say don't trust China. Will you trust the media reports and World Health Organization reports of deaths in Italy? They tell you how many to expect in the US, and it's a very reasonable and realistic figure given that Italy is at or near peak. Given the US's low death rate, 1.6% versus UK 6%, that makes the alarm look even worse at an astonishing 400 times worse than the worst real situation that the world has actually experienced. WND anyone? Here's Thailand. Korea, South Korea, Japan, Philippines, Australia and New Zealand and a shout out to the Aussies and Kiwis that asked politely to be included. We heard you fellas, good on you mates. And finally Iran and Iraq, so beloved of the US. But they're human, yeah? Good luck to them. And here's their numbers. Likewise, South Africa and Algeria, chin up and have a bry, it'll be over just now man. As always, it's been totally lecker doing this for all of you out there willing to listen and watch. Keep the faith, remember real life, the one that kills 65 million people a year, and the government are far more dangerous than the virus. But hey, that's just my opinion as a formerly free but currently housebound citizen by order of the government. The same government that exaggerated the Hubei risk 131 times and the Italy risk 50 times. I'm sure they did that for my own safety. It'll be 3000 degrees out tomorrow, I'd suggest you stay indoors for your own safety. If you wouldn't accept that kind of absurd warning, why are Britons accepting it without question for a virus that can be easily fact-checked? Do your own research. Spread the word.
Thank you for listening and watching. I'm Andrew Mather, a 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. A bunch of stuff. Take care. Feel free to get in touch, andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.